Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tori. I'm the Office Coordinator for Fluid Mechanics and today I am joined by Vadim Shoiket. How are you? Good. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about your experience in the swimming world and the company um, that you are a part of, Physique Swimming. Yes. So first things first, I want to get started with the most important question, the most basic question. What is your swimming journey? What got you started? What kept you going? And where are you now? That's a great question. Uh, <clears throat> and thank you for uh, starting off on that. Uh, my swimming journey started actually as a young boy. Um, I grew. Uh, I was born in the former Soviet Union, and uh, both of my parents were actually swim coaches, and uh, they met uh, uh, doing the same line of work, uh, being uh, professional swim coaches at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we moved to America in uh, the early uh, '90s, um, <clears throat> they were able to continue their aquatic professions, and. Um, so when we moved to the states i kind of uh you know started swimming on the, on the club team uh in morris county new jersey and when i started uh, uh, being around uh, teenager age um, i began to start doing some uh, basic aquatic work uh, just uh, part-time aquatics uh, lifeguarding and uh, helping out um, uh, physique swimming which launched at that time in the late 90s by uh my mother actually in uh, Morris County, New Jersey. Um, I started uh, teaching along with her and um, immersed myself into the small business world of, uh, of uh, learning uh, how to swim or teaching how to swim. Right. Um, and um, my journey continued. I swam competitively uh, through high school, then I swam uh, competitively uh, through college. But uh, throughout that whole time, I would say a lot of my energy and focus was actually on uh, uh, devoted to working in aquatics as a, it was a way for uh, for me to uh, generate uh, some income and revenue um, um, in high school and in college. And um, when I was an undergrad in college, I actually ended up uh, launching physique swimming uh, in New York City. Um, this was probably about in 2004, 2005. And um, I launched the school while uh, I was still finishing up my undergrad degree and I was uh, renting facilities and uh, uh, hiring a few teachers from uh, just working at uh, other um, aquatics organizations here in New York City and started developing a small team of, uh, of instructors. And by the time I graduated uh, from undergrad, I, I've already uh, kind of uh, had a few lo locations that I was renting um, by uh, um, a few hours per week uh, just to accommodate different clients from different neighborhoods. And, um, and then the business just kind of continued. I mean, since then, we've, uh, we've done our own summer camps, uh, our own street clean stroke cleaning camps, and um, have partnered up with, uh, par uh, have partnered up with uh, after school uh, programs and uh, other um, uh, special abilities uh, programs uh, that uh, we, um, um, <clears throat> we also work with and a few nonprofits. So we kind of work in all different ways of um, in, in swimming and with, with the focus of uh, trying to be as inclusive as possible and, provi and provide a uh, um, an equal platform for everyone uh, to learn how to swim. I, I feel like this is kind of the the motto and uh, the, you know, the goal that we've always had as a family um, in swimming. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's yeah. talk a little bit more about physique swimming, because yeah. from my understanding, you offer services literally for, from everywhere, babies all the way up to and including adults. Um, the camps, as you mentioned, um, learn to swim on all levels and team prep. Um, so how is your program unique? What are some of the unique services you offer and the things that make you stand out from other companies that are similar? Sure. Um, I would say we are unique um, um, just because we have a very personable approach when it comes to learning how to swim. Um, in other words, uh, we really are, are versed, very well versed in starting swimming at age of six months. Uh, this is something that uh, we've been doing. Um, as you mentioned, you also have a, a little passion for uh, working with babies. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we start at six months. So we, we believe that uh, 
uh, learning to swim um, as early as possible really creates a few a few benefits uh, for development um, of the child. Not only it's a life skill, but it's also a skill that that promotes certain type of uh, cognitive um, aspects of development and physical aspects of development. Um, so our approach is definitely personable, customizable, and and really allowing. Uh, for anybody to enter into swimming. Um, I mean, it really doesn't matter from what background you're coming in. Uh, you might be coming in from a certain type of demographic or you might have a certain type of condition or an injury or an ability. Um, I feel like we we really try to, you know, build that bridge in, in what your goal is. Um, one of the other things that I feel like that we stand out, and this is just uh, hearing from other people that, uh, that tell us, is that, you know, we're not a swimming school that uses a whole lot of props and equipment as far as, uh, you know, putting a, a backpack or some sort of uh, having, a, um, you know, a system of, of, uh, of layers where you take uh, one piece of the backpack off and then the yeah. child kind of <laughs> gradually. Everybody's approach is different. All the approaches are great. I think the most important part is you need to learn how to swim. You need to get into swimming. How you choose it, where you choose it, um, you know, is uh, is really up to you. But uh, so we, we stay away from from uh, from from that kind of approach. We really focus on a lot of um, natural progression. So really so tailoring you know, it to the individual. Exactly. Yes, cater to the individual. And, and really making uh, the um, client, the swimmer, feel uh, natural and in control of the, of the water. So, and that, you, know, that, you know, now we can jump up to like the toddler age, like the three to five years old, let's say. Um, you know, it's important that when they're coming in, that they're taking uh, control over the environment and not wow. rushing themselves into, or we're providing some sort of, you know, um, um, safety net that's not really there. We want to make sure that they're aware of their abilities and um, um, and how it is that they manage themselves in the water. Um, so that's that's a unique approach. I feel like that we've kind of developed um, as a team. Um, and the other thing is, you know, we keep our our group classes small, and uh, we really kind of focus on. Uh, also, a lot of flexibility with with our clients. Uh, a lot of clients are busy. They have families. Uh, they're running around. So uh, sometimes, you know, they have to miss a class because of X, Y, and Z. We're more than happy to give them a makeup and and really kind of try to work with everybody's schedules. And I and I feel like that's some of the positive feedback that we get from our families. Um, that uh, you know, we we have this. Uh, constant kind of open door. I mean, we don't really want you to miss out on classes that you've paid for. We really want you to, you know, make sure that you're um, getting your swimming in and getting your time in the water so you can be competent and safer. Absolutely. Well, learning to swim, as far as my experience goes, is definitely something that is done over time with repetition and as you mentioned the individual attention and making sure that each person that you're working with um, gets the tailored experience that is going to be the most effective for them um it, it's a, that sounds like an amazing thing that you guys really focus on yeah. um, to make sure that everybody's having the best experience because at the end of the day the safety and the confidence is really the most important takeaway um, for each of these people that comes to see you Exactly. So, so what, in your opinion, are some key factors that lend to being a successful coach, a successful learn to swim teacher, having a successful team? Fundamentals. Fundamentals. Love yeah. it. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, we hear this a lot, but uh, um, I, I really think uh, uh, being able to understand fundamentals um, on any level from a beginner level to an elite level really um, uh, shapes your your style and your success in the water so I mean if you're if you're uh, you know a uh, learn to swim uh, swimmer and you're just learning how to be comfortable in the water we're working on floating gliding breathing um, you know being able to roll over from your front to your back to be able to swim on your side to be able to swim on your belly on your back 
Um, if you are an advanced uh, elite swimmer and you're looking to shave some time uh, off uh, to get into to get into a qualifying meet or a qualifying time, you know we're working. We're still thinking about those fundamentals. It might be a better push off. It might be you know a tighter streamline and extra dolphin kick. How are you going to do that? Um, how are you going to approach that? And um, and what what are the building blocks for that? So I feel like uh, you know our building blocks are I mean out of fundamentals and uh, and progressions. So okay. So what advice do you commonly find yourself giving your swimmers? What is something that you tend to repeat pretty often to a lot of people? Streamline position. Streamline position. I was the same <laughs> way. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's uh, always streamlined. Everything starts off with an excellent streamline. It's how you feel when you're pushing off into a streamline. It's how your feet are placed on the wall uh, before you push off into a streamline. It's how you submerge underwater. Um, and, and, you know, and I think uh, we build off on that. Um, we really are focusing a lot on making sure that we do a lot of good wall work. Uh, we are we don't have a, a competitive club team as part of our um, uh, business structure at the moment, but uh, we do work with um, you know swimmers that are going to be qualifying for club teams and um, going to want to make uh, swimming uh, their main sport. And we've had swimmers that are now are now uh, started with us. They learned to swim as um, as children and uh, they went into a club team and now they're getting uh, scholarships in, into colleges. So we love to see this journey and hear from our family that uh, you know their swimming uh, journey started at physique swimming and now they're looking at like, you know, uh, at, a, at a school to go to and, um, and, and participate um, in the college team. And, um, Going back to that, we are we are really kind of uh, focusing on on how you would be doing things on a team on an elite level and right. what what is it gonna the fundamentals the platform that we're gonna give you. Right. So not just focusing on learning to swim and then moving on, but also focusing on making it a lifelong passion, something that they can continue with throughout whatever they're gonna end up doing with themselves. That's right. Right. So this is going to apply a little bit more to your swimmers who are getting towards the team prep and then moving on to teams. Yes. But what would you say are the most important factors or the most important factor in swimming, in your opinion? Would it be the fuels that they take in? Would it be the technique that they do to focus on the brain and their mental capacity or something else? Yeah, definitely all of those combined. I think propulsion plays a huge role in it. Mm -hmm. uh, the feeling for the water um, is uh, gigantic. I think that's 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 an important uh, um subject matter when you're starting off your season and you're training in the beginning and you need to kind of uh, you know you've taken maybe a month break from from competing and from practice and you're coming back and now you need to start you know swimming some yardage and start getting your cardio back and getting into good shape all that really comes from also uh, having proper propulsion uh, excellent sculling to be able to really feel uh, what your wrists what your palms can do in the water and then kind of identifying those trigger points that 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 add on to uh, the rest of your mechanics in in, um, in your strokes. Right. So in your career and as you are working with these swimmers, um, even now, um, what tools have you tr traditionally had access to that would help you with those goals? Um, a pool and some lane lines, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Start with the basics and move on from there. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I, I would definitely say, obviously, you know, just getting the uh, having the ability to get in the water and train is is, is uh, number one. But as far as as far as tools is definitely the amount of resources from us, us professionals that we now have. I mean, I think we're now have entered a whole new phase of this industry of uh, this aquatics industry in comparison to where my parents were at in in the you know in the 80s and the 90s. So I think now um, um, us being a part of the United States Swim School Association um, and, and, and seeing the alliances that we formed with other swimming schools and how uh, 
we share out information and knowledge on how to teach um, has been has been uh, great. Um, has been colossal for for our success. Um, so that, that's one source um, is um, is definitely these kind of moments in, in, in sharing out. Um, other sources, I would say probably finding good talent um, of teachers and and uh, and really kind of having that that uh, approach and in, in, in forming a really good team that understands swimming and and can be professional in in the way they go about teaching swimming and coaching swimming. I think this is something that you know we really try to send, set a high benchmark for is integrity. So. And with integrity, you know, you you can start taking a lot of uh, advantage in um, of the resources that uh, that could be available. Right. Well, speaking of tools and resources, um, you've had an opportunity to take a tour through our FM Fast Track set of tools um, that we've built to help both coaches and swimmers get the most out of what they're doing in the water. Yeah. Um, you've gone through what we have in there, including the discovery center, the training planners, um, the educational content. So what was your opinion of that? And what would you say is the piece of that or a couple pieces of that that you might take out and use with your own team? That's a great question. I think it is a fantastic platform and congratulations on uh, Thank you. Uh, this platform. I know you guys have been hard at work. Um, I would say uh, some of the, my, my favorite things that I've uh, that I saw from the presentation was uh, the library. I think the the, the library, the resource center, you guys, yes, you guys are putting together um, is uh, monumental, and uh, you know that that really um, allows you to kind of dive in and, and and see where everything is resourced. My other favorite thing is definitely um, understanding the. Um, the what the muscles are doing in the water and how you are strength sharing. program yes absolutely what is that so yeah the fm strength program was designed to be dry land training um, yes. from the perspective of the muscles that we use while we're doing the strokes in the water um, so really taking a look at if you're doing freestyle, for example, in every part of the stroke, what muscle groups are you using and then how can you train them even when you're not in the water. So focusing on the kinds of push ups and sit ups and pull ups um, that you can do to support your in water training. Yeah, I, I thought that was fascinating. And I love the illustrations and uh, the, the diagrams. I, I, I think uh, for anybody that that has uh, some some solid goals and and they're looking to achieve something, this platform is instrumental in keeping yourself organized, motivated, and uh, you know allows you to really understand how to dial in. I mean, I'm actually um, a byproduct of food mechanics. I uh, I've known uh, the founder of uh, food mechanics uh, for many years now. I think uh, John would say you probably we've known each other since I've been uh, a, like a little boy, like 15 years old or 12 years old. So we're getting to almost like 20 year, 25 year benchmark. And I actually um, took a, uh, a sleepaway camp uh, with John um, in, the, in Pennsylvania at a college. And uh, we were in the water for about, I don't know, maybe four, four hours to six hours per day. Um, and I really love the approach of food mechanics. I, I, I still use some of the things, some of the ways that John was teaching at that time, I still use them in, in my everyday teaching and coaching. Um, That's fantastic. It's great to hear that that it stuck with you to the point that you're still using it even today. That's exactly. Great. And to have the platform mm -hmm. like a cherry on top, because now... Absolutely, because now you can reinforce it. <laughs> that, having that, that uh, the subscription service to be available, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is... Um, is um, you know kind of ties in a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of different things together. Absolutely. Okay, so I have one more for you before I let you go, um, and that is, what are your long term goals at this point? What would you like to see going forward from here? What's the point? Um, really create a more of a sustainable business environment for ourselves. I, I feel like uh, uh, the pandemic has been a, a real hard hit on a lot of uh, businesses. Um, you know, it's a service that uh, that takes a certain amount of uh, energy um, and intention that they, they need to provide. 
And um, so our, our, our short-term goal is to come back and and hopefully you know continue to operate in the in the same capacity as we did before and have facilities open up and uh, and be open to you know um, small swim schools uh, mom and pop businesses that can take out a certain part of pool time in a certain area that people may not even know that they had a pool or knew that they can take swimming lessons and this is how you bring swimming to different types of uh, communities or families. Um, it might be just as simple as it could be on the Upper East Side, you're offering a class um, across the street and you know the people can go across the street and take a class, or you're coming into um, an area that, um, uh, you know, that lacks swimming schools. So these are the kind of things that we wanna continue on is, is, uh, um, is expanding and, and making sure that uh, you know, people are aware that um, swimming is available um, and swimming lessons are available. Um, another long term for us is to uh, partner up um, and, and grow swimming through our partners. Uh, that could be, you know, somebody like Fluid Mechanics or some of our partners that we have in New York, which is Plus Pool. Uh, they're doing great work. Uh, currently, they're, they're trying to... Uh, uh, figure out how they can build a, a pool in the East River that will, um, with new technology that, 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 that cleans the, the river water and allows for pools to be built in, um, um, in different areas where, where there is water and communities may not have access to learning how to swim. And so by building these kind of pools and connecting with those communities, um, is something that we would be lo looking to do more um, in the long run. Um, and then perhaps uh, getting into more of a competitive swimming, um, having our own club team and, uh, and, and having a flagship uh, location. Um, but uh, these are, are long-term goals and it, 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 it takes a little bit of, uh, of um, it's a process to get to get Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Creativity, drive, and a little bit of luck. <laughs> luck and, um, and exactly luck. And, and just, uh, you know, we're so busy with, with trying to do what, what, what we can on day to day just to get by. So mm -hmm. I think we can kind of, you know, focus on that and then, and have a little bit of room to, to see what, what else we can do would be great, but definitely expanding swimming in a sustainable way and, and, and providing a, a continuing to provide um, a very personable uh, approach in learning how to swim and become a competitive, becoming a competitive swimmer. Absolutely. It's amazing that you guys are able to offer resources and support and um, guidance for yeah. individuals and families who want to not only have safety for their young children or for themselves, but also have an opportunity to keep a connection for what could end up being and what seems to be in a lot of cases, uh, lifetimes, literally exactly. from birth to adulthood and beyond um, being a source for people um, so that they know the best way and, and that they're able to do what they're, what they want and, and achieve their goals, <laughs> which is fantastic. A lot of times, uh, you know, uh, parents will approach me and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll start talking to me about uh, their goals for their for their swimmers and how and how they're looking at everything. And I really tell them, I, I, I tell them, listen, if your child is enjoying the process of being on a team, coming to practice, hanging out with their friends, you're already setting them up for um, so much uh, value in life wow. and positive habit yeah. to continue um, uh, and, and, and that, that will add to their longevity. Right. And, 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 you know, as much as we try to go for that gold or make that trial or hit, you know, hit up this national meet, um, I think at, at the end, um, it really just uh, uh, making sure that uh, you can love and enjoy the the art of swimming or the sport of swimming and and i think that's kind of where where you know we really try to position um everybody so um when when they come to our to our program right 
Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, is there any last nugget of wisdom you'd like to impart on our viewers before we close out? Um, nugget of wisdom. <laughs> That's, uh, I would say, uh, you know, we have a quote here. Uh, it's on our website. A man is not learned until he can read, write, and swim, which is a quote by Plato. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is uh, something that uh, we kind of uh, uh, walk our, our line on. Um, and, uh, and when we say a man, we're talking about all, all sorts of uh, people. So from any sort of background, I think, um, you know, learning to swim is, is essential. And, and this is where you know, the cornerstone of our program and then and, and how we, uh, we really got started. So, uh, you know, continue to, to stay safe and, uh, um, and use swimming as an ability to be better, be fit and, uh, be more competent and confident in everything that you do. Absolutely. Thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day and hopefully we'll be able to see you soon. Likewise, Tori, thanks so much uh, for this opportunity and uh, a wonderful day as well. Thank you.